All right, so today we are starting our unit two dealing with absolute value equations. So we're going to first talk about how to evaluate absolute value. Um, we're going to show you how you can use your graphing calculator to help you. But the first thing we're going to talk about is actually what absolute value is. So if you would, go ahead, just draw a number line real quick. Draw a number, draw a number line in your journal. All right, right here we're going to call this zero. Right here we're going to call this five. And way over here we're going to call this negative five. All right. So whenever I'm talking about, say, the absolute value of negative 5, I'm talking about the distance it is from 0. So from 0 all the way to negative 5, that's a total of 5 units. Even though I'm going in the negative direction on the number line, it's still 5 units. So the absolute value of negative 5 is just 5. All right. However, if I was going to travel, say, five units in a positive direction. If I said, hey, what's the absolute value of positive five? Well, that answer is just positive five. So it's basically from zero. What is the distance of a number from zero? That's going to be the absolute value of that number. So hopefully that'll give you guys a quick little introduction to absolute value. Um, so on number one, we're going to do a couple problems here. We're just going to look at number one. It says a is equal to negative one. So wherever I see a, it's equal to negative one. And c is equal to five. So if we were to evaluate this, what we have to do is we have to evaluate whatever's inside of these absolute value bars. So I'm going to do five parentheses. I'm going to plug in a negative one then do minus 7, close it out, then I'm going to add 3, then I'm going to open up a parentheses, I'm going to plug in a 5, put minus 4, and then close, close it out with the absolute value bar. So once again, we need to make sure that we do whatever's inside of the absolute value bars first and foremost as we're evaluating it. So 5 times negative 1, it's negative 5. So we have negative 5 minus 7. Now negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12. But what is the absolute value of negative 12? Basically, what is the distance from 0 to negative 12? Well, that's a total of 12 units. So I'm just going to put 12. Over here, bring down the plus. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 4 is 11. So that's that's the absolute value bars. There's the 11. What's the absolute value of 11? Total of 11. And when you add them together, you get the total of 23. Okay. So obviously, that's how you would do it by hand. That's how we would want you to know how to do it. Um, if you want to check your answer in a graphing calculator, you could uh, on a TI calculator, there's a couple ways to get the absolute value. You could hit alpha, window, enter. That's one way to get it. Uh, the other way to get it is hit the math button, go to the right where it says number, and click ABS, which represents absolute value. Then you could just go back and type in what I typed in. So 5 parentheses, negative 1, close parentheses, uh, minus 7. Then move a right arrow, put plus, then you could alpha window enter. And this time it looks like we're going to put 3 parentheses, put 3 parentheses, and this was a 5, minus a 4, and yes, the calculator will do everything for you, and boom, you still get 23. But obviously, I would like you to be able to do it by hand. Let's go ahead and do one more, all right? And this one is probably even more important, because some of you might be tempted, you might be tempted to try to take this negative 3 and this minus the subtraction and try to distribute and we cannot do that okay these absolute value bars are impervious to distribution so you cannot distribute into the absolute value bar so please that is not okay all right if i said what's negative three times the absolute value of x well that's just negative three times the absolute value of x that is not equal to negative three inside these are not equivalent to each other even though if you graph them, all right, you will see that these would not be equivalent to each other. But these are not equivalent statements. So please 
put no not equal to each other. All right, so what do we have to do? We have to take the C value, which is a 5. So right here, I'm going to put negative 3. 0.5. I'm going to open up the parentheses. I'm going to plug in a 5. Then I'll put plus 2. And I'll close it out. Put minus. We've got a negative 0.5. I'm going to open up for the B value. Ooh, we got a new, we got a new, new player here, which is negative 8. I'll go and change the color here. So our B value is negative 8. So I got to plug that in there just like I had to plug in the C value right there. Then I will close the absolute value. So here we go. Negative 3 times the absolute value of, so 0.5 times 5, that's half of 5. So half of 5 is 2.5. And 2.5 plus 2 is a total of 4.5 minus now, a negative times a negative makes it a positive. You don't have to put the positive there, but it is a positive. What's half of 8? Half of 8 is 4. And the absolute value of a 4 is just a 4, but we have to bring that minus down. So now what we have to do is basically we have to take negative 3 and multiply it by the absolute value of 4.5 or 4.5, which is 4.5, and then take away a 4. Well, negative 3 times 4.5 is negative 13.5 minus 4, which gets us to negative 17.5. Okay, now what we have to do, all right, that's going to be our final answer right there. Okay, now if you're wondering how I multiplied those together, a couple of things you could do, all right, you could do it the old tried and true method, which you do 4.5 times uh, 3, and then put a negative next to it, where you do 5, carry the 1, and you get 13, and put the decimal, okay? Um, I like to, sometimes I like to do it, break it down into 4, and then put like a, a 0.5 or a half, and negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, and negative 3 times a half is negative 1.5, and in my head you can just put negative 13.5. So you could use the distributive property to help you out if you if you desire to do that, okay? So that's just another way of thinking about it. So there's a couple of evalu evaluation problems, all right? But now we're going to get into a more complicated thing. We get to call what solve absolute values. What we're going to do is we're just going to work on these two um, today. We're going to work on solving them. And hopefully you have a better understanding of what absolute value solves. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Desmos. All right, I'm just going to type in the absolute value of x absolute value of x. So there's our parent function, okay? Well, what if I said, well, what if y was equal to 5? What would be my two answers? Well, if I plug in a negative 5, what's the absolute value of a negative 5? Positive 5. And what would be the absolute value of a positive 5? It would also be a positive 5. So here I actually have two solutions. So something you want to ask yourself or write down is say, what number could I plug into x for it to equal a 5? Like, at the absolute value of what number gives me a 5? Well, I have two answers. One of my answers is a positive 5, and the other answer is a negative 5. So look, there's my negative, there's my positive, and what do they both yield? They both yield a positive 5. Like, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, let's try another one. Ready? What if I put x plus 1 inside the absolute value and I wanted to make it equal to, let's say, 3? All right. So what this question is asking you is it's saying, if I said the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 3, what two numbers could I plug in for x to make this true? Well, you can see one of the numbers right here is a negative 4 right here. And the other number is just simply the number 2. So those are the two numbers. We'll see if this works. What's 2 plus 1? 3. What's the absolute value of 3? 3. What's negative 4 plus 1? Negative 3. Well, what's the absolute, what is the absolute value of negative 3? positive 3. So this is something you're going to need to understand as you're solving absolute value 
equations. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. So take a look at our first question. All right, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit easier. All right, we're going to go ahead and solve this. Now, whenever you are solving an absolute value equation, you have to isolate the absolute value expression. So whatever's inside the absolute value bars, you're going to try to isolate that and get that by itself. So if you were taking notes in, say, like a math journal or something like that, step one, I'm going to put isolate the absolute value expression. And I apologize for my handwriting. There we go. So we're going to isolate that. Right now it's being multiplied by negative 3. So the very first thing i got to do is divide both sides by negative 3. So these negative 3's cancel out. And I am left with the absolute value of 4x minus 9 equals a negative 3. So what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out, like, what number could you plug in for x to somehow equal a negative 8? Hmm, interesting. Well, the absolute value of any number can never equal a negative. All right? It can equal 0, but it can never equal a negative. So I'm going to have to say this is going to be no solutions. There, there can't be a solution to that. Or you could say it as an empty set, also known as a null set. All right. So this answer is no solution. Sometimes the answer in life is there is no answer. So what would this look like? Let's say if I wanted to graph it. All right. So here we go. Let's go and let's take a look at this graph. So hopefully this will help you understand it. So right now I'm going to put a negative three right here. And then I'm going to put 4x minus 9. So you can see, I'm going to type in 4x minus 9. All right, and then over here, I'm going to put in a 24. 24, all right? And here you can see the graph. Here's the, here's the graph. It's right here. You can see it. And y equals 24 is way up there. Well, you will notice that 24 and this graph, they never meet. If they never meet, there are no solutions. Now, how could it make it? How could I make it a solution? Well, I'd have to drop it down until it finally hits zero. Now it has one solution right about there. It's got one solution. Where would that solution be? That solution would be at a 2.25, 2 and 1 quarter. Now, if I keep dropping it down, now I have two solutions. So now you can see this thing has two solutions right there and there. So as I keep doing that, so an absolute value can have two solutions. It could have one solution. Okay. Or technically it could have no solutions where it doesn't hit. And how do you know when you're doing it algebraically? Well, if you ever get an absolute value expression equal to a negative, just stop working on the dadgum problem because you can't solve it. That's enough. I'll, I'll, I'll stop griping. All right. So that answer is yes, no solutions. Well, let's go over to one where actually you actually have a couple of solutions. Let's go and do number six. So go ahead and put number six in your journal. If I'm going too fast, just pause me, write things down, and press play. All right, so what is our absolute value expression that we need to isolate or get by itself? This guy right here. I'm going to isolate him. Get him by himself. All right, so right now we're, we're being multiplied by a negative 6. So the very first thing I need to do to isolate that expression is divide both sides by negative 6. Now, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that's 1 and a half. I'll put 1.5. If you like 3 over 2, that's okay. 3 over 2 is would still suffice. And that is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus 2y. All right, so we have the absolute value. 5 minus 2y equals 1.5. Now, what number could you plug in to absolute value bars to make it equal to a 1.5? Well, technically, you could put in a positive 1.5, or what else could you do? You could also put a negative 1.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this expression right here. I'm going to make this equal 
a positive 1.5, and I'm also going to make it equal a negative 1.5. So here's how it works. I'm going to split into a couple of equations. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. On one of the equations, I'm going to put 5 minus 2y equals a positive 1.5. And on the other one, I'm going to say 5 minus 2y could also equal a negative 1.5. Now, the, the good news is, is whatever I do to these equations, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So now you just, you're just now you're back in Algebra 1, just solving for y. So we're just going to take away 5 from both sides. Take away 5. Take away 5. And we are left with negative 2y equals 1.5 minus 5, which is a negative 3.5. If you don't know how to do this in your head, it's okay. You can just put 1.5 minus 5 in the calculator, and voila, it spits out a negative 3.5 for you. So we're going to take that away, and we're left with negative 2y equals negative 6.5. And then, last but not least, we just divide everything by the number in front of the letter or the variable. So we divide everything by negative 2. All right. And you get y equals half of, these turns into a positive, half of 3.5 is 1.75. And half of 6.5 is 3.25. Just remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I have two answers. So what would my solution set be? My solution set would be 1.75 comma 3.25. These are the two answers that I could plug in to that absolute value equation, and it would work. So I could plug in. What, what are my two answers? I could plug right in here for y. One of them could be 1.75. The other one I could plug in would be 3.25, and those are what's called my solution Try it again. Solution set. So this is my solution set. Okay, the like, numbers I could plug in to make this statement true. All right, so there's my solution set. Now, I'm going to show you how you can check your answers on Desmos, but please do not just use Desmos to get your answers. Otherwise, you're just going to be mathematically weak, and you wouldn't want that to happen in your life. So right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to, to Desmos. I'm going to type in the original equation. See that? Negative 6. 5 minus 2y. Now, Desmos only graphs in terms of x, so i got to change that y to an x. So here we go. 5 minus 2x. I'm going to put 5 minus 2x. And what was our y value equal to? I believe it was equal to a minus 9. All right, so negative 9. Negative 9. There we go. Negative 9. Now, look what happens when I zoom out. Oh, there it is. We have our two answers. What was one of our answers? 1.75. What's our other answer? 3.25. All right, so understand that this absolute value equation equals a negative 9 at two different x values, one of my x values being 1.75 and the other one being 3.25. I hope this was helpful, and have a wonderful day.